Well, I think that um, the, the desire for freedom, first of all, is a truly universal desire. And I think that there have been so many developments that have taken place in the last decades and centuries that have helped uh, progress that along. And unfortunately, some of it came out of the devastation that was wreaked, for instance, by the Second World War. And I think people at that point, uh, and, and even the First World War, um, people at that point had never seen such broad destruction, such massive violations of, of the rights of human beings, that I think that that really generated a very a significant change in the mindset about people, about sort of individual rights. And clearly, the passage of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1947 has been a tremendous milestone. We have only seen progress from there. Uh, even though Freedom House was only established back in 1941, if we had been evaluating the levels of freedom in the world in the year 1900, for instance, we wouldn't have found a single country in the world that fit our, uh, our methodology and would have been put into the category of a fully free country. So that's quite a tremendous state of progress. On the other hand, we can't be complacent. And so much of the progress that we saw um, in the last couple of decades, particularly the changes that took place in Latin America and Central and Eastern Europe, that uh, once those countries made remarkable progress, but if you look at, for instance, the former Soviet Union, not only have they not progressed, many of those countries have stemmed back from where they were before. So we've seen an overall kind of stagnation over the past decade um, that I think we need to stand back and say, hmm, it's not an automatic march forward. It really has to be worked at. And, and it has to be worked at not only to bring about freedom, but to maintain freedom once countries have at least adopted the mechanisms and institutions of democracy.